Hey Conway, I'm Brianna and this is WTGR News. In school news, there will be a fundraiser at Pizza Inn for Christian McBee from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. on Thursday, December 6th. Everyone should attend this very special event because it is for a great cause. Reflections Literary Magazine's theme this year is sometimes the name they give you is all wrong. Faculty and staff submissions are also encouraged because we are all the voice of Conway High. In local and state news, a Lexington County woman says holiday thieves are on the prowl. She put up her Christmas decorations one night and then the next day they were all gone. But when she turned out the lights for the night, two people decided they wanted her decorations for themselves. The Lexington County Sheriff's Department says the same thing happened to a house that night less than one mile down the road. So make sure to keep a watch out on your Christmas decorations. National news, the parents of a South Georgia college student first learned from Facebook that their daughter had been found dead in a study room shortly before Thanksgiving. Now they hope that Facebook and other social media sites can help solve the death of 17-year-old Jasmine Benjamin, which police are investigating as a homicide. A family friend forwarded the Facebook post about the teen's death to her parents before they were officially notified by authorities, but many questions remain unanswered about how she died. The family has yet to learn the possible time frame of when their daughter died and police have not shared any theories about how she was killed. Also in national news, winning tickets bought in Arizona and Missouri matched numbers drawn for a record Powerball lottery jackpot of $588 million. Holders of the two winning tickets in the Wednesday night drawing will share an estimated $385 million. Well, Conway, that's all for your announcements. Over to Club and Guidance and then Chelsea with your sports. Thank you. Club and Guidance announcements. Beta Club, the next meeting is December 4th. Key Club, the next meeting is December 11th at 325 in the Mini Auditorium. English Honor Society's next meeting is December 18th. Social Studies Honor Society's next meeting is December 11th. National Honor Society's next meeting is December 12th. Tri-M Honor Society's next meeting is December 10th. Spanish Honor Society's next meeting is December 17th. That's all for Club and Guidance announcements. Hey there Conway, I'm Chelsea here with your sports for today. Quarterback Taj Boyd was named the ACC's top offensive and overall player of the year. Woo! Boyd averaged a total of 336 yards of total offense per game and also led the ACC in pass efficiency and touchdown passes, breaking his own school record. Boyd's coach commented on his accomplishment, stating, He's broken just about every record out there and to the point where he's breaking his own records. I really believe he is the best quarterback in the nation, and I am glad to see the American football coaches agreed with that today. This award means a lot to him because he has great respect for the players and teams in this league. That's my baby! He has also been a great leader all season. He is very deserving. Also... Virginia Commonwealth University women's basketball coach James Finley claims that he was fired because he is gay. The university claims that they let Finley go to, due to wanting to move the team in a new direction and that his contract was not being renewed. Now Finley says an investigation has been launched by a new division of the university meant to support diversity. Now Conway, let's take a look at your sports lineup and scoreboard. Today, Thursday, JV Wrestling Conway versus St. James in Georgetown at 5.30, Varsity at 6 o'clock. Last night, CCU played against Boston University. Sadly, they lost with a final score of 44-74. USC also played against Drexel with a final score of 58-55. Clemson and Clemson's women's basketball team also faced off against Indiana with a final score of 49 to 52. Well, Conway, that's all I have for your sports today. Now let's go to Alejandra with your weather. <clears throat> hey, Conway, I'm Alejandra with your weather. Today we have a high of 60 and a low of 32 with a 0% chance of rain. The humidity is at 51%. Tomorrow we will have a high of 60 and a low of 32. That's all for your weather. Now back to Brianna in the studio. Thanks for that awesome weather report, Alejandra. Now let's take a look at the feature of the day, which is on athletic trainers because this month is career month and that is the career that was chosen. Athletic trainers specialize in preventing, diagnosing, and treating muscle and bone injuries and illnesses. They work with people of all ages and all skill levels from young children to soldiers and professional athletes. 
Many athletic trainers work in educational settings such as secondary schools or colleges. Others work in physicians' offices or for professional sports teams. Some spend much of their time working outdoors on sports fields in all types of weather. Trainers need to at least have a bachelor's degree, although both bachelor's and master's degrees are common. In most states, athletic trainers need a license or certification. Requirements may vary by state. The median annual wage of athletic trainers was $41,600 in May of 2010. Employment of athletic trainers is expected to grow by 30% from 2010 to 2020, much faster than the average for all occupations. As people become more aware of sports-related injuries at a young age, demand for athletic trainers is expected to increase, most significantly in schools and youth leagues. That's all for your news, so Conway, stay classy.